Fine Wine is the mysterious technology AMD used to ensure their GPUs from the early 2010s remained relevant for most of the decade. Every now and again, new driver updates from Team Red would unlock more performance than a GPU was previously thought capable of, effectively meaning you could download more FPS every few months. This was AMD at their most magnanimous, bestowing the masses with free gaming performance like a nerd Oprah. At least, that's an optimistic analysis. The cynical might suggest that Fine Wine was actually more of a happy accident, a case of a series of bug fixes being spun into a feature by Team Red's army of fanboys. AMD's GCN architecture was present in both flavours of games console in the 8th generation, so it was natural that games would be developed with this architecture in mind. And if there's one thing that hasn't changed much in the last decade, it's GPU manufacturers treating drivers as something of an afterthought. Either way, I thought it might be interesting to see how much improvement one of the classic Radeons of the early 2010s saw over time. It also helps me justify to myself why I bought my fourth R9 290X in two years. Here's the plan. I've downloaded one game per year from 2012 up till 2019, and I'm going to test each of them with a driver from the year they were released, with the exception of 2012, as that was the year before the R9 290X came out, as well as the latest legacy driver pack from 2022. I'm not using any old versions of the games in question, like installations from Optical Media, so the only thing being tested, in theory, is the drivers. The test platform is not era appropriate, I do happen to have some 2013 components around, as you can probably tell from some of my other videos, but I want to try and minimise any potential limitations from the rest of the system, therefore I've chosen to test on my Ryzen 5 5600X with 32GB of DDR4-3600. Starting things off with a game from the year before the R9 290X was even released. Far Cry 3 doesn't present much of a challenge for the old flagship, using the December 2013 driver set in the first place, averaging over 100 FPS at 1080 Ultra. That being said, there's clearly been some work done in the intervening years, as the final official driver release adds roughly an extra 10% performance to averages, but only about 5% to the lows. Bioshock Infinite likewise runs like a dream on the original 2013 drivers, though this time the performance increase is less impressive. At 1080 maxed out, the original drivers could break past 145 FPS on average, but the newest drivers only bring that up by a further 8 frames. Perhaps this one's a little too early and games just aren't demanding enough yet? Twenty fourteen's Shadow of Mordor sees a healthy gain in minimums, even if the average doesn't improve by the same degree. Using the built-in benchmark sees a 91 FPS average and 62 FPS minimum using the late 2014 drivers, whereas the latest set sees averages climb to almost 98 and minimums to uh, soixante neuf. GTA V sees the trend continue with another single-digit improvement over time. There's no doubt that there's an improvement coming from the 2015 drivers to the latest, but the fact that it amounts to less than 10% on average isn't all that impressive. In 2015 it scored 78 FPS on average, in 2022 that climbed to 85. Doom 2016's change in performance was perplexing. I chose the OpenGL API for testing, and this didn't see the results I'd expected. The 2016 drivers beat the 2022 ones by a bigger margin than any we've seen so far, with the older set scoring over 118 FPS next to the 22.6.1's result of 102. I'd selected OpenGL for testing so that I could also bring in the Nemaze drivers to see if they benefited from the revamped OpenGL instructions that came out in September last year, but alas, the Nemaze drivers scored about the same as the legacy set. Assassin's Creed Origins from 2017 only gained about 8% performance over the 5 year gap. The launch year driver scored 42.5 FPS at 1080 high, whereas the legacy driver set from 2022 lifts that to almost 46. 
minimums experience a similar improvement, though again, this really isn't that much to shout about. Shadow of the Tomb Raider's most impressive aspect was how much better it scored in DX12 than DX11, jumping from 60 FPS on average to 67 using the 2018 drivers. With that excitement out of the way, the 2022 drivers don't really excite quite as much, only adding a couple of extra frames to the tally for an average of... <sighs> soixante nerve. <laughs> 2019's Control might not have received any post-launch attention from AMD whatsoever, at least on GCN cards. The late 2019 driver set scored almost identically in the benchmarked area to the 2022 driver, and even beat the newer drivers by an imperceptible amount in 1% lows. Testing games any more recent than this seems hardly necessary. The 2022 legacy drivers from AMD are merely a security update from the 2021 legacy set, launched when AMD ended official development on GCN 1-3. This would mean that there's, at best, seven months worth of development time between late 2020 drivers and the final ones. From the data gathered then, Finewine doesn't look all that impressive with modest 7-11% to gains in most titles, offset by inexplicable losses in others. I'm not for a moment suggesting that anyone should go out hunting down old drivers for a specific title. Sometimes driver development is about more than increasing performance, and factors like bug fixes and improved stability aren't being measured in this test. Is fine wine overblown? Worse, is it even real? I don't think I'm in a position to state definitively. Maybe I've missed out on some particular titles whose performance was transformed by driver updates, and I'd love to hear your experiences. In the meantime, I intend to have another look at Fine Wine in a graphics card that's a bit more recent. Stay tuned for that in a few weeks' time. In the meantime, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.